You invited me to your house to do this. This isn't my home. You I live wanted, under the ring. I wanted to do it in my house, and we're in Fort Lauderdale under a ring. This, is, this was your. What are we doing? What is this? It's an interview, but I usually do it in people's homes. This is your show? Yeah. Under a ring? On a dirty floor? I guess. Wow. Can we do it in just two chairs? Can we just hang out like normal people, normies? Oh, we've been talking about making this happen for a long time. Yes. We have a friend in common in Steve Guy. Shout out to Steve Guy. And uh, I'm glad we're finally making this happen here in South Florida. So this is, this is, this is the real Dylan here. Okay. I didn't realize Fort Lauderdale was South Florida until uh, Jim just said it. South Florida, first time. I thought we were like, I didn't, I didn't, I, I don't know where Fort, Fort Lauderdale is. So you thought like Fort Lauderdale, Fort Myers, I like. It was up north, like the Keys. Is oh, the Keys up north? Hold, or is the Keys oh south? My, I mean, this is, no, the Keys are like as far south in America as you can go. Yeah. Like the furthest south point in America is. By, lower than Miami. Yes. Yeah, like to drive from Miami to Key West would be like a four hour drive. No. Yeah. Oh. It's like a one lane highway, too. I graduated high school. I, I did. There you go. Oshkosh West High School. I graduated. That, that's the actual name of your high school? Yeah, Oshkosh West. We have Oshkosh North and Lourdes Academy as well. <laughs> and Fox Valley Christian. <laughs> Four big ones. <laughs> <laughs> I see when you're booked on these shows, you're officially booked as Swoggle. Yeah, because they, they took the horn from me. <laughs> but your Instagram name, your Twitter name, still Hornswoggle. Stop mentioning that. Okay, I don't sorry. Want to lose that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, everyone. No, I mentioned actually. I mentioned it a lot, and it's. Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming they just don't care. Hopefully, um, I don't know. Yeah, I still am WWE Hornswoggle because I'm. <laughs> stop, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that. Like that's, that's of course I made, you are. I made my name is that. I like when Dolph Ziggler was promoting that you were at the comedy show with him. He's like, join by Hornswoggle. He's such a dick. <laughs> He's such a dick. He, the whole comedy show thing, came up because I called him out on it. I said, you're in my home, like, my second hometown essentially. You're there. Thanks for the invite. And he puts, you opening. <laughs> and I go. Sure. Yeah. That, yes. That's fine. <laughs> He's such, and then like every tweet was like, he gave me a new name, like the vivacious hornswoggle. It's, I said, what's up with the names? But he's he's a dick. But he's my best friend. That's a dick. Ziggler. I've he's I've interviewed best. him so many he's times. I love Ziggler. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, actually, he's gonna be on with us in a couple days here. And he's funny. Yeah. Like he, I, I hate putting him over because. He's a dick to me, but he was really funny, and it was doing those two comedy shows it was so awesome. Uh, just because I've never done it in my hometown, my parents were there the first night, and I didn't know. No way! I didn't know they were coming. Wow! I walked up. I'm walking up to the stage, and I see my parents, and I go, oh, "I am. I have to tell three coming jokes, and one about me being hammered." Oh wow! Oh. Hi, mom. Yeah, that it literally was like, "Yep." Parents are right there. I'm sure they're real proud. <laughs> but it was, uh, I told Dolph after. I go, yeah, my parents surprised me. And they came, met him, met him again. And he go, you didn't know? And they go, no, he didn't know. Oh, no. It was crazy. So you're putting Ziggler over as being really funny, but you're also really funny. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, uh, I enjoy it, man. I, my body likes it a lot more than wrestling. I bet it does. Uh, but it's, it's something that I really enjoy, and... I'm trying to get better. I, uh, that second night was this was my tenth show, and they're just quick, quick sets, but it's it's fun. I do really enjoy it. Do you think taking bumps for someone with your stature is worse on your body, uh, or is it easier on your body? You're not falling as far. With my medical history, it's it's a lot scarier. Um, I have a metal rod fused in my back, and I was told no trampolines and no contact sports. <laughs> so and do I, you not bump anymore? Uh, no, I was told that at four years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I wow. somehow said, fuck you. To, like that mindset. Because I'm going to be a professional wrestler. I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to fall for a living and say, I don't care. But it's just, I don't know. Like, I, I think there is more risk. 
um, especially with my history. But I don't know. I, my dad worries about it a lot. I'm sure. I don't. I'm sure any parent worries about oh, yeah. their kid yeah. in the wrestling ring. What I was it at three, four years old where you you know you realize your parents realize something was wrong here with your medical history? Um, my my dwarfism, midgetism as I call it, I can say it. You can say it's okay. I, what is the correct term? Dwarf, but you can. I'll give you the pass. Okay, because little person seems very demeaning. I hate that. I hate dwarf. Dwarf is weird to me. It's just a. It's like people like weird about the moist word, which is stupid to me. Yeah. But the word dwarf gives me that feeling. I'm just like, Ugh. yeah, I could see that. But and little person, like I always say, the word midget makes me money because midget wrestling on a poster, you know what it is. Of course. Little person wrestling, what is that? It's right. Like, yeah. What is? It's, who? What? What is little? Yeah. P- is okay. Just <laughs> small people. Five footers. <laughs> Normies? <laughs> Norm- <laughs> like small normies? <laughs> but it's uh, it just, like, midget wrestling people know what it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so back to my midgetism. Yeah, sorry, yes. No, uh, what, what, <laughs> but what caused no, I, a, a I, rod I had, to be in your back? I, I had curvature with achondroplasia, okay. which is the kind of dwarfism I have. It's the most common type. It, curvature of the spine. And the, to straighten it out. They tried surgery, and the first doctor never did back surgery on a little person. Paralyzed me. and uh, No way. Yeah. So then I had to be helicoptered or plane ride. I don't remember. You were like four years four old. Four or five. Yeah. I don't, bleh, whatever. <laughs> it's young. Uh, to Minneapolis, and they fused. They took out a rib and fused that, and I met a rod in my back. So, wow. And yeah. somehow you still wrestle. That's yeah. amazing. I bite asses, Chris. You bite asses. <laughs> it's, that's but no, that's that's <laughs> what I do now because my body is is rough. But it's uh, I love it. I I I, I don't know what else I would do besides work at Target and Target at this. <laughs> like I worked at Target. And I I loved it, but I would hate my life if I still worked there. You could work at Walmart, Chris. <laughs> I really want to like you. <laughs> I want to like you. There's people watching this that work at Walmart. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, okay. When you first step upgrade, f- when you first step foot <laughs> in, into a wrestling school, yeah. did they go? No, we're, we're not. This is. Uh, no, because they saw. Uh, uh, they saw dollar signs with a midget being on their shows. Because mm-hmm. um, I don't believe it or not, there's not a lot of midgets in Wisconsin that wrestle, Chris. Mm. Not a lot. Okay. Um. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I said I don't want to be trained as a midget wrestler. Yeah. I don't want to bite asses and pull down rest pants, and that's what I do now. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I wanted to be a, I wanted to be trained as a regular wrestler. I wanted to take bumps as a regular wrestler. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to do because I didn't watch. I didn't grow up watching Sky Lolo and Little Beaver. And then I watched Jeff Hardy and Rey Mysterio and all them. That's what I like. Yeah, I, I didn't. I just didn't mm. want to be the easy out. Yeah, were those the people you looked up to? Jeff Hardy. Because uh, of my size. Oh, I did it. Yes. I didn't mean to uh, do that. I always said I wanted to be X-Pac and Jeff Hardy. Okay. Because I really liked X-Pac, especially when he's one, two, three kid. Yeah. Um, and I liked Rey Mysterio only in WWE because I never watched WCW. I would only watch the first hour of WCW, which is when the Cruiserweights yep. were on. Mm-hmm. But then I would turn over. At 9 o'clock. Well, I guess in your time zone it would have been 8 o'clock, no, right? 7. What? It started at 7. Oh, so I'm saying when Raw would come on at, at 8 o'clock. Eight. Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. you're in Central Nitro. Time. Nitro yes. started at 7. Yes, Nitro with the cruiserweight hour. Yes, okay, it all yep. makes sense now. But it's, uh, yeah, then I would, I would immediately turn over, and uh, I didn't care about WCW. I didn't get it. Uh, I bought the, I got the games for 64 just because it was wrestling games, and my parents thought, like, hey, you must really like this because it's wrestling. Oh, wow. Holy oh, cow. Yeah. It's okay, these mics won't pick up a lot yeah. of that, but wow. Um. It's like someone's someone's coming in here. No one is. It's, it's before the show. <laughs> oh, even though you say I, you know, I didn't want to be a midget wrestler, you can say that to a promoter, and they can go, "Yeah, hey, that's really nice, Dylan. You're going to wrestle this." And midget. they did. And I still said I'm not going to wrestle as one. Mm. I'm going to do six one nines through the bottom and middle, and do frog splashes, and do this stuff that I shouldn't be doing. Yeah. When I, and I was like, oh, just bite the ass. No, I'm, and I told guys, I'm not going to do it. 
I don't want to be that. I didn't get trained to be a midget wrestler. Yeah. I got trained to be a professional wrestler. I want, I want to put things in perspective. How tall are you actually? 4'4". Four, 4'4". Four. Four, four. Four, four. And what is the, the, the cutoff for dwarfism? So a dwarf is technically uh, under, I believe it's under five foot with, medic, with medical deficiencies. Okay. Uh, my arms and legs are bowed. My head is a little taller, but my torso is the same size mm. as a normie. Um, a midget, I've always heard, is a fully grown, non-medically deficient person under five foot tall. Okay. 4'11", you're a midget. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so when you got into WWE, yeah. um, you know, it, it turned into the we ass can't biting. use the M word there. Vince hates the M word. Oh, what what word he does he prefer? It. The M word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I talk about it in my book, Life's Short and So Am I. We were getting there. But. Great title, by the way. I love it. Yeah. Um, and this is the same. We will get to that in a second. But it's the same author. We just interviewed Al Snow sitting yeah. in these exact seats right here. In this building? In this. In this. Awesome. In this. That's crazy. Very building. That's crazy. Yeah, right here. Um, the first night. Or s the first the first or second week. I uh, was at TV's. Um, they had to sneak me back. Out after my segment. They had to sneak me back. And Kevin Dunn goes... Vince, uh, we gotta get the midget out of the ring, up from another ring. Vince, we gotta get that midget out. God damn it, Kevin, he's got a name. Oh, it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, and um, he always told the commentary team that could never call me a midget, they could never refer to me as a midget, because it's, it's crass. Uh, and maybe it's because he knew that one day, uh, what, that, that he would be, you would be his son. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Uh, you but that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's exactly sure it. why. Yeah. You knew all along, though. It wasn't yeah. because Ken got suspended. No. We <laughs> talked about Chris Benoit. <laughs> yeah. It was. Yeah, I, I yeah. Talk, I've i talked to Ken about uh, that on here. And yeah. Like, that storyline would have taken. He tried to deny it. No, no, he was very open he, about did it. Did he admit it? Oh, yeah. Because he's tried to deny Like, he's very 50-50 with something. Okay. With that. He'll either deny it fully. Nope, wasn't supposed to be me ever. Just a lot of rumors, just, you know, internet stuff. Or, yeah. Yeah, he was like, oh, yeah, it was supposed to be me. And here's the thing. That storyline would have gone completely different. And it had, you know. Can you imagine? He would have been the guy. Yeah. Instead, it was me. And, but, the, <laughs> but that was also a great storyline yeah, for yeah, you. It was. And it, it, I found out that day at 4 p.m. No way. 4 p.m. Bruce Pritchard comes up to me. Give me your cell phone. Absolutely not. Just give me your cell phone. You're going to want to. Okay. Puts it in his pocket. You're Vince's son. We need to sneak you under the ring. No one can know. Where is your gear bag in the locker room? Wow. He goes, <coughs> sneak under the ring now without anyone noticing. I'm bringing you your gear bag. So you were under the ring for like five or six hours? I was used to that. <laughs> like, That's crazy. No, like that. Yeah, I was because it was the last segment. Yeah. Oh, that. Like, oh my God. Yeah. It was crazy. And then I said, "All right, can I make one call?" I uh, was sure. Dep I'm gonna be right here. Who is it? I said, "My dad. I just want him to be here." And so I said, "Hey, Dad, uh, can you please bring Grandpa oh. to the show tonight? Tickets will be there." He goes. Okay, and he didn't, like, my dad knew if I really, like, I would always want him at shows, but he knew if I really asked him to be there, it had to be something. Yeah, yeah. And he was there. He, right front row. It's awesome. It's so really I, cool. Him and my grandpa. Unfortunately, that storyline kind of ended right there, though. You, are you right? I, uh, yeah, no, I found out it was because it was supposed to be originally Finley versus Vince at Mania. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is really cool nuts yeah but i heard vince just wasn't feeling it huh yeah so, but i could feel like like it was revealed that you were the son vince looked you know upset about it and it was kind of like that was that was really it lasted two months and yeah got that jbl thing in there and that was it yeah it was uh yeah and it just fine by me i got 
main event of Raw segments out of it. Yeah, you did. I got the, the reveal and then the uh, the reun the like 15th or 20th, 15th anniversary, I think. The ending <coughs> shot is me pouring beer on Vince with all, with the beer bash with Austin. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Like, yeah. That's crazy to me. It might have been underage at the time. But just the closing shot of Raw is me pouring beer on Vince, him coming up to me after. What's that all about? And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm in trouble. That was great. Oh. Awesome. Yes. Wow. Yeah. But so the, the payoff there was you were Vince's son, but then like with the anonymous Raw general manager. Oh. So we knew that Ken Kennedy was supposed to be Vince's son. Who was supposed to be the Raw general manager? No idea. Does I anyone know? No. I'm sure someone does. But that was day, uh, uh that was revealed on a Monday. I was told that Saturday night, Saturday night before, hey, learn a New Jersey accent. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sure. Really? Okay. Because yeah. you're going to be this heel general manager from Jersey. Big Nick from Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> that's where it was going to go. I feel like with both of those storylines, like – you became like the butt of the joke there. I always laughed because it was like, okay, we don't have it out. Just give it to Hornswoggle. Right. Like that family guy bit. It's just like, it just falls on me. How, how, do you, how does that make you feel? Awesome. It puts me on TV. It, it does. <laughs> it does. So it's fine. No, it, it's fine with me. I, I don't care. I wish the GM thing would have turned out like we planned, but I can't do a New Jersey accent. And so. You obviously tried to do one. I did in, in rehearsal. Uh huh. Uh, in front of the whole ro- like the whole roster was out there, including Hawkins and Kofi in the <laughs> stands, <laughs> laughing <laughs> at my pain. And then they cut the mics because it was going so bad, and now they're booing because they want to hear this even more. These are my best friends. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, it's it's everything's meant to be, man. I was there for two weeks under ten years. Yeah. I had, I, when I was told it was going to be a six month thing. Yeah. I either did something really right or stayed under the radar really well. Or stayed under the ring, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a comedian, folks. <laughs> no, this is the comedian. <laughs> so, like, I, I've heard stories where you said, like, Kevin Dunn forgot you under the ring. Yeah. Uh, how long were you under there? I've been, there's times I've been under the ring for, like, Probably five to six hours. Oh, my God. What are you doing overseas, under there? Overseas house shows, like in Mexico, where we have to do it. We I have to go under before the crowd gets in. And then we're the, f- we're the main event. I'll change under there. I'll, I'll uh, have, I used to like, I would have my PSP on the road. I would <laughs> play that underneath the ring. I would take a nap. Like, I would, and I knew. Crazy part is <coughs> I could picture the match. Even if it wasn't our match, like a, it was like Benoit versus MVP. I don't know if I can say that. Um, <laughs> but I could picture the match going out above me by the sound of the re- bumps and the crowd reaction. Mm. I knew what was happening above me. Yeah. It was nuts. It was crazy to me. But it was awesome. Like That, ne- that stuff never bothered me because I could, I, could, I could literally sleep under there and I would wake up at the intro for the show. Would someone give you a cue when it was your time to come out? Uh, house shows. Live event, live events, as we call it. Of course, business. yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> I would have we would I would, we would have a queue, but at TVs I would have a monitor over there. Oh, yeah, so you could watch monitor, the whole show. Literally, it was awesome. <laughs> have a whole monitor, watch the yeah. whole show. How they had a pad, nice pad under the ring. <laughs> House shows, it was like, <laughs> here's the bucket of water bottles and Gatorades. What if you had to like go to the bathroom? Knock on wood, I never had to. Literally, in all my years there, I never had to, and it blows my mind. Th- that's. That's mind over matter. That's what that, or good catering. I don't one or the other. No, because I have real bad IBS. So it, it, it's just <laughs> luck. Just luck. What was the cue at house shows? Did throw, someone they would throw a water bottle under. Oh, okay. Well, that's discreet. Back. Or, or uh, fit would lift up the apron. Okay. Yeah. Well, that would make really sense. Yeah. 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 But it was the water bottle actually like was because no one's watching the. It was the ring announcer was just sitting there here, and he just quick toss it. Right. And usually it was like a lot of times it was Tony Chimmel and man, him and I, he's like my, he's like one of my wrestling dads. I gave him so much hell under the ring. I would be under there and it would sneak me under sometimes before the sh- like video package would be on and they'd put me in the dark and 
I would just sneak under. And then uh, he'd be in the ring. And every time he'd put the mic down to get out, to get out, I would start, I would pull the mic cord <laughs> and pull it under the ring. Or I would go out, if it's dark, I'd go out and grab the ring bell. Or Boogeyman would come out and I would take the worms and lift up the apron a little bit and just throw the worms at him. <laughs> and he, I, just, I would just make his life hell. But it was, that's how we passed time on the road. <laughs> I feel like uh, people might not know that you have a son. You post about it all the time on Instagram, but people yeah. might not know this. He's uh, and he's a normie. He's one of you. <laughs> he's one of your people. <laughs> I made a I made a normal kid. Doesn't uh, have, like doesn't have doesn't have messed up arms and legs. Scientifically speaking, yeah. though, what are the odds of your kid being for a boy? It's very very likely. And I was worried. I was really likely worried. that he'd be a dwarf. a dwarf. Wow. Yeah, I was really worried. Um, we got his mom got an ultrasound when she was six months pregnant I believe and uh, I wanted a boy and she wanted a girl found out it wasn't a dwarf and I was really excited found out it was a boy she's laying there and I go yes I <laughs> told you <laughs> and she's bawling <laughs> asshole father of the year moment number one before he was even born uh, but no it's it's he's the best legitimately the coolest part of my life I love him he's like and how old is he? Nine, going wow. on nineteen. <laughs> he passed my height at seven. Oh my god! I'm screwed. I'm ninety eighth percentile for height his whole life. <laughs> He's gonna be seven foot. Yeah, I know it. It's just gonna be stupid. Does he want to be a wrestler? We had a ring day yesterday for an hour. His newest thing is he wants to do a moon salt. Oh my god! At nine. So what does not a stand? Not a off the ropes. A standing oh. one. What does the father in you say to that? Go. Wow. Get the crash pad and go. Wow. We'll send this video to Nana. <laughs> she was not happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. If it happens, it happens. Like, I'm not going to force him into it. But it would be really cool. Yeah. Be, I, would be, I, I don't know of any midget wrestlers that have a kid wrestling. So that would be awesome. Yeah. Me. So not only second generation, but first ever. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's, it's cool, man. He, uh. He just wants to do it, and he, he, my company back home, he's putting up the ring with the guys at times. Wow. He's doing the turnbuckles. He's well, that's just cheap labor. Uh, exactly. Yeah. He's selling merch. <laughs> he's just doing everything. He wants to be a part of the business. Um, whenever I have local shows, that like other other than my company, he travels with me to all of them. We wow. Had a show last night in Milwaukee. Just can I go? I said, well, I'm gonna get home late, and then I have to fly out. So you gotta go to your mom's like late tomorrow tonight. I'd like to go with you. Perfect. Wow. It's awesome. Yeah. Is, is it just a coincidence that you're here in Florida? Raw reunion is on Monday in Florida. It's like a three-hour drive from here. Is that why you asked if I was here all week? Yeah. It is. Yeah. No and I wasn't trying to like, I was just like, you must be here all week, no. I would assume. No. Uh, haven't got the call. Okay. Haven't and you said you're flying back to Wisconsin tomorrow. Fly back tomorrow. I'm not flying back to Florida on Monday. Not yet. I'm not flying back to Florida. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> no. This truth thing is really making me relevant, though. Yeah, I was just going to say. Mentioning me 97,000 times a week. Wait, I'm not interviewing Drake Maverick right now? No, I'm much <laughs> fatter. <laughs> 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 he, uh, his, his, my leg weighs as much as him. Uh, but I love it, man. Like it's Yeah. It's cool. This I'll is why it. it would make perfect sense for you to be at Raw Reunion to win the 24-7 I'm championship. I'm going to be at home. I'm going to be at home. <clears throat> Your new 24-7 champion Stop. right here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it would make perfect sense, though, with how much your name's been coming up on Raw every week. It's, uh, but it's let them do their thing. Okay. I never wait by the phone, but when it happens at Rumble this year, yeah. it was incredible. Greatest Royal Rumble uh, in Saudi. Awesome. I guess when they, when they need to sell out stadiums, they call the little guy, you know. But were uh, you under the ring the whole time at the Rumble? Like, is there, no. an, is there another method to get you to the ring? There is. There is on your attention real quick. It's okay. Security's going to be sending in about five minutes. There's an announcement so going on here. Really. It's okay. The, it doesn't, okay. the mics won't pick I it up that much. <laughs> Security is setting up in five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> you will not get in without your ticket. <laughs> Doors are in 45 <laughs> minutes. Okay. Back to the interview. Uh, yeah, so the usual thing at television was... 
darken the lights, put a video on the screen, and all the stagehands would be around me, and I would be in the middle in all black, and they would go, we'd go side ramp, and they would be look like they'd fixing, they're fixing the ring. Yeah, okay. And I would just slide under. Oh. House shows, we had a ring box, which we would just sometimes that was at the end. Like we finally decided, hey, I can fit in one of these hampers. Let's just do that <laughs> instead of four security guards running me to the ring. But it was uh, actually at, Royal, at Greatest Royal Rumble, or at this year's Royal Rumble because it was in the baseball stadium. Yeah. It's nuts. Uh, match before ended. They had me on a golf cart. They had to get me around the crowd. This is the ring. I'm here. Now they had to shut the lights off, and I had to literally all the stagehands run from. It would have been with the bullpen. I know. I don't know baseball. No, I yeah. think it's called a bull. Sure. Yeah. The pitchers do their thing, <laughs> that, right? Mm -hmm. Not then the ones that are playing, the ones that are practicing. That's right. The bullpen. <laughs> I had to run from the bullpen <clears throat> to the ring with these stagehands around me. It was so far. Yeah, that's. And I yeah. couldn't believe it, but it worked out. No one saw. Like, no one saw me, which was crazy. No, no so, one expected that. No, and I, that's the cool thing is I don't think anyone expected it either. You know, if you are, or I mean, when you are on Raw Reunion on Monday, yeah. do you have to dye your hair? First off, <laughs> Saudi, I did. Saudi, yeah. I, they didn't ask. Oh, you just did? I didn't want to. Two people suggested it to me, and I was very mad at them. And then they spread the word, and other people suggested it to me, and I was really mad because I was growing my hair out. I had to cut my hair. <coughs> and I had to re-bleach it. Yeah, yeah, start all over again. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had to go to Disney the next week with my bleach blonde hair. Oh, great. Yeah, looking like a fat Cody Rhodes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this one, this Royal Rumble, I wore a hat all day. All day. Mm -hmm. They didn't notice. Thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I saw you. Uh, I saw you briefly at Double or Nothing weekend at Starcast, Vegas. And, in Vegas, yeah. And a meme had come out that weekend that oh you looked, my god, that you looked like AJ Styles. So that one like blew up. Too. Oh yeah, like blew up, blew up. Yeah, and so much so that at AIW the next week, I wrestled Pat Buck as AJ Styles. That's so good. I and love. I, I actually I somehow did a Pele kick. And I was like, even for my fat ass these days, I can do a Pele kick. I'm still got it. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only time. You still got yeah, it. Yeah, the only time I'll ever think that. <laughs> but it's, uh, that was like how crazy that blew up was awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People were like, oh, no, he's really mad about that. No. It's making me relevant. Like truth. I keep mentioning Aren't my you, Don't you think you'll always be relevant, though? I don't know, man. Like, but realistically? I, I, don't, I don't like to think that way. Um, because I, just, I mean, I was there for ten years, yeah, but it's a lot of things going on every week now. Yeah, There's seventy hours of wrestling every week. Pretty like between. But there's everything. a lot. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. I I'm not talked about besides this truth thing. I, I don't know. I don't like to think about it, but I I still must be here and there if I'm. On indie shows every week. Yeah. How long do you plan on working indie shows? Or I how long do you plan 35. on wrestling? 35. It was literally a number when I got released. It was literally a number I... So that, you're 33 now? 33. Yeah. So two more it'll, years? It'll be more than that. Of course it will. Yeah. I'm dumb. That's not dumb. No, it is. Uh, <laughs> There's something, though, about like being in this world. Like You, know, you feel the can't love. can't leave. Yeah. You can't, literally, you can't leave. And I, uh, I told my buddies that I run the company with back home. The minute I turn into the hammer, uh, burn my gear. <laughs> burn my gear. Do you, do you feel like you're headed down that path at all? Not yet. It's here in some, some weeks I do. Uh, some matches I do, and sometimes it's like a... But the, I don't ever want to be that. I'm not worth the promoters bringing me in. Yeah. And... It's not, I don't want to do that to my reputation. I think that a real case could be made that you could be put in the WWE Hall of Fame. Nope. I don't like to think that way. Well, I, I said it. You well, don't have you. to say it. You don't have to think it. But I appreciate that. Why, I, uh, why didn't you get to go in with DX? I was a mascot, Chris. Okay. Something I was told every week. <laughs> 
but I still got the merch checks, which helped. <laughs> do, you, do you still get them? Still get the royalties. No! Oh, wow! Oh yeah. my God! It's uh, no, it's it's like that. That's something. That's something like, that's crazy to me. Is I uh um my just having like a, a loan, a figure alone, one action figure would have been awesome. I had a ton, and then I had one right before my last one was I had all my tattoos and then my son's name and handprints on its back. Wow. Nothing will ever beat that. Like, yeah, he can he can bring it to show and tell, <laughs> like kindergarten because he doesn't have show and tell in third grade anymore. But he can like just see it, and that's my handprints when I was born. Yeah, with my name on my dad's action figure. Yeah, it's cool to me. What made you want to write a book and tell your story? Uh, selfish reasons. <laughs> More money? No. The, the no. DX merch wasn't enough? <laughs> <laughs> Those green hats didn't, don't, aren't paying the bills anymore. Um, actually, they are. You can buy them at Merch Stand for just $20. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to ask you um, a specific figure for the DX money, but like, <laughs> is it, a, is it a, like enough money you could get by on it? Yeah. Not wow. Still, not still, but yeah. Wow. My car. Wow. It was very good. I mean, it probably still is, right? No. The, when that shirt, when those shirts came out with me on it, with DX. It's only the shirts with you on it. Yeah. Okay. So it's not all DX merch across no, the board. No, 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 no. Because Billy just, Gunn said that he gets he DX still, merch yeah. across the board. He's still across the board. Yeah. I'm a mascot, brother. <laughs> I'm not a member, just a mascot. Okay. Back to the book and you like making Tory. lots of money on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I didn't, I didn't care about the money. I was literally... I did... WWE. I was in Muppets Most Wanted and Leprechaun Origins, which you can get at the bottom of the Walmart bin next to Air Bud. <laughs> and I was like, screw it. I want to do a book, too, just to say I did. And also, I have this pretty cool, crazy, insane story, fun story that I just wanted to tell. Yeah. Like, I just wanted to tell how I didn't get bullied, and I should have been. I didn't get. I did. I, I I shouldn't have had this opportunity from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, not a wrestling hub, mind ya. Uh, <laughs> but I somehow made it, and it's just it's a cool story, and I, I I'm really excited for all the work that we've put into it to it for it to come out. It's like it's real to me now. It's really really real. And it's, when does it come out? Uh, uh, September 10th. Officially on, right. on Amazon and bookstores, I believe. Yeah. And we're doing an early release, just a local early release, on uh, August 3rd for my company in two weeks. And then put, throwing them all back to the company Yeah. on September 10th. The number one pre-ordered book on Amazon. Wow, congratulations. Like, like I saw that when it first came out. That's amazing. Within the first week, it was the number one yeah. pre-ordered book, which... It's nuts. Yeah. Like, again, yeah. just crazy things happen. Well, you talk about how you you know, you know, weren't bullied and you should have been. There's a bunch of people that are going to be watching this right now who are, yeah. quote, unquote, normies that yeah. maybe don't have the obstacles that you had in your life, and, and they're still struggling with things. What do you say to people like that? Uh, it's so easy, man. It's so easy for me to say. Um, but I, I, I would do the BS stars with WWE, and I, I, I wasn't on them right away, and I... Stephanie McMahon was in charge of those. And I said, Stephanie, I would really like to be a part of this. She goes, why aren't you? Mm. I said, you tell me. I said, I really want to be a part of these. I think I have a message. She goes, of course you do. I yeah. know you do. She put me on everyone from there on out. Wow. And it was cool because I, bullies want a reaction. If you don't give a bully that reaction, I would just laugh it off. Said, yeah, I can fit into that locker. So what? You're going to class and I'm sitting in a locker. Sweet. Now who's winning? Just like easy stuff. I would kick myself in the head, but with a can and make money at parties. <laughs> I would crush cans <laughs> on my head with my foot and make money at parties. Yeah. Can't really get bullied when you're doing that. Yeah. And it's just, but it's stuff. If you don't give the bully the reaction, yeah. they're just a dick. They're not a bully. They're just a dick. Well, most bullies are dicks. Yeah, but yeah. they're not getting the reaction from ev everyone. Yeah. Now they're being like looked at like, just being a dick. But you have this great confidence about you. Yeah, because I laugh at myself. Yeah. Maybe you that's the secret to yeah, life. You can't. Yeah, yeah. I, I truly think it is. Yeah. If I if my son stubs his toe, I hear it go. Gah! 
I go, what happened? He goes, stub my toe again. And he's like laughing inside because I taught him like, first thing I do is I'll, are you okay? Yeah, and then I'll just laugh. Come on. And I'm teaching him that it's, it's okay to, to mess up. Yeah. You fall on your ass on the ice, laugh. Yeah. When he did it as a kid, as a real young kid, he would fall. They tell you, the minute you react to a kid getting hurt, he's going to know he got hurt and he's going to cry. If you just kind of just ignore it or mm. check to make sure he's That's okay. That's so true. Yeah. Most kids will fall, then look around. Yes. And if then just, react. If you either look away or just look at them, give one of those, <laughs> they'll, they will not cry because they want the, <gasps> oh, yes, my God. Yes. And I think that scares them, too, because it's this crazy reaction sure. that they've never had in their life yeah. because they've never fallen. Yeah. It's this crazy reaction that almost makes them nuts. So, yeah. But that's just me, man. Laugh at yourself. Laugh at yourself because if you don't, no one else will. Uh, so September 10th is when the book comes out. Yeah, man. Okay. September 10th. I appreciate so. you taking the time to do this. It's exciting. Uh, yeah, this is awesome. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm excited for everything. <laughs> I'm excited. Like life, life, life is going to be really fun. It's going to be fun like this. It was such, it was, man, we put some hard work into this book in the last three years. And and you're with a great publisher too. I am. Yeah, I'm very very excited. They published Al Snow's book. They published uh, uh, it's ECW Press. Yeah, yeah. that's the wrestling, basically yes, yeah, so the wrestling you, book company. If you've read a book, the funny <laughs> thing is, I always thought it was ECW, like like Paul's company. Yeah, yeah like, like Heyman's company. Heyman's still doing <laughs> books. This is really weird. this. Something's weird about this. It's like, did WWE like, just keep the ECW press? This is really weird. But now it's like their own thing. Right. Which, uh, yeah, it's awesome. I'm, I'm glad to be on board. And I, I, I think they're very excited as well. I hope they are to put this out there. Because um, th it's going to be a book literally like no other. It's uh, wrestling and midget stuff and dad stuff and Muppet stuff. How, how is your father, Vince McMahon, mentioned in the book? A couple times. Hey, how is your relationship with your father, Vince McMahon? <laughs> Finley's my dad. It was revealed on Raw. I know. I yeah. <laughs> no one ever says that anymore, by the way. It's always, you're Vince's kid. But what about the whole... Because well, that was just like a Finley, oh, I was covering for Vince. Like, yeah. was he really covering for Vince? Yeah, yeah he was. Okay. So I don't get the money. I don't get that those McMahon bucks anymore. <laughs> 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 but uh, that was... That was I always think, like, I did so many cool things. Yes. That. Yeah. And the DX pyro stuff. You were the cruiserweight champion. And that's always, like, really low on my list. That should be way higher, though. Way high. Yeah. Because I shouldn't have ever wrestled to begin with. I should have ever been WWE. And then I was a champion. I was, like, the last champion before the stupid purple belt. So... <laughs> They didn't give me that title either. I was really excited. I was like, can I just have the belt? Yeah, they just kind of went, oh, yeah, the, there's no championship anymore. Yeah, and I just wanted the actual one, and they always said, we'll never, we never know if we're bringing it back. Drop your cards. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just talking anyway. Yeah, no, they, I just wanted the actual title. They gave me a replica. Oh, that's cool. That I had to buy on shop. <laughs> Seriously? No. I got the nameplate. They gave me the nameplate. Which Hold on. So when you go to... It's, yep. When you go to, to a wrestler's house and they have the championships hanging out... They all got them, I'm sure, from the oh, company. But not you. I got mine on WWE Shop. Nice. They gave me the nameplate, though. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Says, actually, the cool thing about it is it says, it says Hornswoggle McMahon, which is only used for two weeks. Wow, that's badass. Yeah. yeah. They were cleaning out the drawers one week to go... Here, I go. Oh, that's cool. This is really cool. Yeah, like it was. So it's on. It's in my office, on the <laughs> shop replica title. Well, we look forward to the book coming out in yeah. September. We look forward to uh, you appearing on uh, Raw Reunion. It's not happening. Yep, winning the twenty four seven championship uh, off of our truth. Yeah. Or, or maybe no. it's from. Yeah. This isn't gonna happen. You keep. You're gonna get your hopes up, and his hopes up. And whoever else is listening, Scott Steiner isn't even here yet, by the way. He's not? Gangrel's here. What's well, his show? It's his show. I hope yeah. he's here. 
Scott Steiner was supposed to ride with me here. And he I was? Think, yeah. And I think he once again just randomly got his own rental car without telling everyone. But we're like four minutes from the airport. He always does this. When I brought him in, he got his own rental car. And I had my guy waiting for him at the airport. <laughs> this is my life. I love my life. Life's short and so am I. This is Chris Van Vliet. <laughs> I'm Dylan Postel. Do, Thanks, do you have an, do you have an out like an out saying? No, that that was pretty good. I usually just say thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much for checking out my chat with Hornswoggle. If you don't already, I mean, why don't you subscribe? But if you don't, you can. Oh, what a reminder! It's right there on the screen. You can do it right now with the sound effect and everything. Uh, thank you to Dylan for doing that interview. A lot of laughs in there. What a great guy! And you can pre-order his book online now. Life is short, and so am I. I felt <laughs> felt so bad when I was talking about like who did you look up to when you were younger? And he's like, oh, because I'm a midget. Yeah, it's not what I meant. You know what I'm talking about. And I actually don't think he's going to be at Raw Reunion, but I just thought it'd be fun to keep talking about it. Although when you're watching this interview now, in the future, because we're going to be posting this on Sunday, you will understand that he wasn't at Raw Reunion. Do you recognize these uh, steps behind us here? If you watch the D'Lo Brown interview, these are the uh, Attitude Era steps that we reference. We are here at the Dania Beach Casino. In Dania Beach is Gangrel's Wrestling Asylum tonight. So a big thank you to Gangrel for making this interview with Hornswoggle happen. Also, big shout out to uh, one of my best friends, Steve Guy, a comedian in Cleveland who uh, also made this interview with uh, Hornswoggle happen. So. Uh, Thank you for making this interview happen just by watching it. I appreciate you. And uh, WWE is coming to Miami where I live on Tuesday. And uh, guess who I'm interviewing? Take a wild guess. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm interviewing Dolph Ziggler. So keep an eye out for that a little bit later on this week.